So I want to introduce you guys to my style. It's called Architectural Abstraction. It's all based on geometry at 30, 60, and 90 degree angles. I usually start with a 30 degree angle here, and then I work in 90s, 60s across. What I'm going to start off with, I mentioned here's a T square. I'm going to start right from the corner there. Kind of break it off here into different angles. Let's do one from the top, maybe. So you can see here, I've laid in you know, several 30 degree angles, 60, 90s here. And this will be our groundwork, and I'll lay in the tape. So the key here is, is you know, pick and choose your battles. And just because you lay down a line doesn't necessarily mean you have to stick to it. And I recommend using the, like, you know, the blue tape, it's you know, the best quality. It's not a commercial, but... <laughs> um, just gives you something a little. The white tape's okay, but it's, it's not the same. One of the other cool things you can do is just I constantly flip the, the canvas around. In this case, it's a wood panel. And what that allows you to do is kind of destroy your traditional composition and you know work it and see if it works from all different angles. Now when you finish the painting you're not going to know which angles up so at the end you kind of you know get a feel for it and it comes it comes out. The blue tape down as you want to you know finger it around. Make sure it's completely tight before you do the paint. This would be the most annoying thing if it's not done right. So what I like to do is I use um, one color at a time and just build the depth using the gloss. The gloss will give you that kind of see-through, as you'll see here, it doesn't... So you want to kind of establish kind of a fun pattern. I like to make so it creates this really nice vividness to the painting. Again, if you go over, just you know, you can do the wipe it out later, which I probably recommend if you want to make a really clean look. But I like to use some of those airs in the painting because you wouldn't have those in a photograph. So it kind of shows you that there is a painterly process in, in, in the actual painting. Color tape. And this will help you accent some of the bigger, larger areas and give you that really feel of vibrance with the just line itself. Well, you want to make sure all the angles are lined up properly. Sometimes it's hard to do because of how you cut the You can tell, you know, using your 90s, it was really lined up, it's a little off maybe. Another way to tell is just 
you know, measure it here. Four and a half to four here. Well, it's pretty good. As long as you're relatively accurate here. Now being slightly off is okay, so that'll give a little bit of interest and it'll bother the mind a little bit. But you want to be pretty close, otherwise it's going to look really amateur. After you get like your small lines in, is add some blush splatter. Creates a lot of energy. Again, doesn't look like a photo. So once this dries and you overpaint, it'll look this really nice glaring effect with the high splash intensity, sharp angle, and a brush stroke motion inside. And you're gonna have clear panels. So now I'm starting the next layer here, green. It's like a phthalo green, one of my favorite colors. Let's see if the camera cooperates here. So now I've finished, you know, the line work here, and I add some splatter. Another cool feature here is add some white splatter. Now one of the best ones actually to use is gesso. So I just need a little bit of the water down. So if you get really close, you'll see this, you know, white splatter, you're like, where did that come from? Because the white's obviously being 